Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to learn how to improvise a solo using the C major scale in open position. Doesn't that sound so boring? We're going to learn how to make up solos, how to improvise a melody. It is loads of fun, loads of fun here. You've learned the C major scale. I wouldn't worry about the alternate picking thing for now. If you can alternate pick it, great. If you can't, just use all down picks. The important thing when we're improvising is that we only use the notes that you're supposed to use. In this case, the C major scale. There might be some other notes that you could use from time to time and later on down the line, it gets a lot freer. But to start off with, when you first improvise, you want to stick with the notes of the scale. And what we talked about in previous lessons was this idea of chords that belong to a key. And we're in the key of C. So we're only talking about using the chords C, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, and A minor. So just using those chords, if you've got a jam buddy, they could be playing any of those chords in any order, and you can improvise, i.e. make up a solo, using the C major scale. They go perfectly together. Now, at this stage, you just want to be having some fun with it just exploring the idea of playing the scale over some chords. It's just really good fun. And I've got a two minute backing track for free. You download it from the website, it's a little MP3. You can play along with it. It'll also be in the practice assistant, of course, if you're choosing to use that. The idea is just for you to have a little bit of fun exploring the scale over the chords, but there are a few things, little tips that I can give you that'll make it a lot more enjoyable experience. The first one is, try and just use the thinnest three strings, okay? Maybe start off just using the thinnest string, then maybe move into using the thinnest two strings, then maybe the thinnest three strings. And the reason for this is you wanna be thinking about the melody, you wanna be thinking about the sound that you're making and how it fits with the backing track that you're playing over or the, the music that somebody else is playing if you're jamming with another human, okay? Or an alien, if you happen to know some aliens. There's a couple of other things. So that's the first thing. Limit the number of strings that you're playing on to start off with. That'll really make a big difference. So instead of trying to think of this huge, big scale, you're just thinking of a couple of notes. It really makes it a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. That's thing number one. Thing number two is that you don't want to be thinking about playing more stuff. You want to think about letting things breathe and playing a little idea that you might repeat a bit. Repetition is great when you're improvising. Don't be afraid of playing the same little bit over and over again and seeing how it changes when the chords change. Because if you play the same thing and the chord changes, the, the way the notes feel, what the, the emotion they invoke is different a little bit. So don't be afraid of just playing one or two notes and repeating it over and over again and letting the backing track kind of change how it all feels. You definitely want to be leaving some space. Let it breathe. Music is a language, and when you're communicating something, you need to leave gaps. If you just talk all the time and you let the notes go one after the other and you play too many of them, you don't leave any gaps and there's no punctuation, it just gets really hard to understand what it is that you're trying to say. It gets a little bit boring for the listener, and definitely after maybe two minutes, whoever's listening to you is just going to be completely bored. It doesn't want to be like that. You want to be leaving little gaps. Play a little bit. Stop a little bit. Let a note ring out. Play a little phrase and then stop for a bit. You don't have to play all the time. When you're learning to improvise, it can be really helpful to stop because it lets you have a think about what you're doing. If you've just been playing on one string, it gives you a chance to think about what the notes are on the next string before you play them. It gives you the chance to think of an idea and then experiment with it and then stop again. Think of another idea, experiment with it, stop again. So don't be afraid of leaving gaps. It will make your playing sound better. And it's the biggest problem that most people have when they're learning this stuff is playing too much. A, a, a gap that feels when you're improvising at the beginning is a really big gap actually isn't to the listener. You can leave quite, you know, a second or a couple of seconds gap it doesn't sound bad to the listener. It feels like a eternity when you're doing it, when you're improvising with that stuff, you know, it can feel like a real long time, but it won't feel that bad to the, or that bad. It won't feel as scary to the listener. They'll probably quite enjoy having these little breaks as you play through. Recording yourself is also a fantastic thing to be doing and that'll help expose that idea of playing too much. So if you've got a, you know, a phone with a record function on it, improvise with the backing track and record yourself and listen back to it, or maybe even video yourself. 
you know, to set up your camera so you can video what you're playing and then watch it back and listen back at the same time. That way you'll be able to see if there's anything that you're doing that's a little bit weird. Some of that stuff like open strings ringing out when you don't want, that'll become a little bit more obvious when you record yourself as well. So that's quite a, a helpful thing. Many advantages to recording yourself when you're learning to improvise, for sure. If you want to get into it, you might want to try singing improvising as well. So using the same backing track and just not playing for a little while and going la 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 la. Now what this is going to do is it's going to force you to breathe. And particularly again, if you play guitar a little bit and improvise and then sing a little bit and improvise, you'll start to hear how they're different and the singing one, generally speaking, sounds more natural and more melodic and more interesting than when you play. Because with playing, it's a bit easier to play too much. And if you, when you're singing, it'll force you to take a breath. Otherwise, you know, pretty consequences are a bit heavy if you don't breathe. So that can be something that will help inform your improvising if you think about all of that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to play over that little backing track that you've got. And I'm going to start with just the thinner string. And then I'm going to move on to the thinner string and the second string. I'm going to really emphasize the idea of repeating little bits and leaving space, the kind of thing that I'd like you to explore when you're improvising. So this isn't an example of like an amazing improvisation. It's an, an amazing example, I hope, of the things that you should be doing when you're learning to improvise, when you're taking your first steps into the improvisation puddle. Uh, big thanks to my friend Dave Marks, who made this backing track. I was... Uh, I've been really crazy busy lately and I knew I needed a backing track. So uh, he's the my uh, partner in the Jam series of backing tracks. We've got loads of backing tracks for sale if you've never seen them before. Uh, usually played with a whole band, real bass and drums, as is this. Um, so I asked him, look, please, mate, can you make me a two minute backing track for beginners to improvise over? And he came up with this. I think it sounds lovely. Um, so do experiment with that. Like I said, it'll be a downloadable thing on the website or it'll be in My Practice Assistant. So let me give you just a little play out for a couple of minutes just to give you some ideas. I'll try and keep it as simple as I can. Start on the thinner string. Uh, try and use the right fingers in the right frets. I find that really difficult to focus on that because my ear tells me, oh, I want to hear these melodies. So sometimes I, I find it really hard to be locked into this. But when you're starting, it's a much better idea to be very focused and locked in on a, a small amount of material rather than trying to play like the whole scale and use different fingers and slides and anything like that. And definitely, if you've tried it before, don't do any string bending yet. Definitely not, because that it's a real wonky scale here in open position to be doing that. So uh, let's have a little improv on that. I hope you enjoy doing this. It really is, a, I think, a fantastic experience. If you've got the opportunity to jam with another person, to get them playing those chords in any order, just make up a chord progression or a song that uses only those chords and then improvise and then swap it over and take turns in doing the soloing. It's an amazing experience. Loads and loads of fun. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. So uh, just enjoy it. That's it. That's, there's no brief. You don't have to be able to do a certain thing. Just have some fun with this for a couple of weeks. Uh, off we go. <laughs> 